Hello, my friends. Welcome to Breakfast with Sergio. I'm here with Luis Martin from New York City, and we're going to talk about today what makes a great studio. Well, hello, my friends. Hey, Luis. How's it going? How are you today? I'm well. How are you? Good, good. Welcome back to Breakfast with Sergio. I have to say you are the only person that's been here twice, so that's pretty awesome. Thank you. I'm honored. I can't wait to get my plaque. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the mail. It's already in the mail. <laughs> Appreciate that. Well, today, my friends, we're going to talk about what makes a great studio. It's part of the series that I've been doing on visiting our studios. But since I cannot go to New York right now, we're going to connect here via the internet, via, you know, online so that you can talk about, you know, your studio, Luis. What makes a great studio in your opinion? But before we do that, what do you have for breakfast this morning? Caffeine. The only breakfast of champions, really. <laughs> <laughs> there you go now do you normally eat something with a coffee or you, you're, you're kind of like a kind of simple start i'm super boring super healthy i eat uh, oatmeal every morning and uh oh, coffee good. a few minutes later so this is the few minutes later <laughs> there you go there you go awesome very cool well Lisa, we've been talking about what makes a great studio right and i have been visited a few studios and been sharing kind of this idea of what makes a good studio uh, so you have your studio uh, also in the same place where you live, so at your home, right? Correct. Uh, how, is, how is that for you, you know, having the space uh, in your, like the space where you live, also being able to walk right into your studio at any given moment? So initially, I had, we have a two-bedroom apartment. I had wanted one of it to be the studio, you know, the sanctuary where I can just close the door and make art. And yeah. what happened is I think I made it so perfect that I wanted to sleep in it. So we turned it into the bedroom. <laughs> Uh, okay. And after that happened, the whole apartment became the studio. So it kind of grew. Uh, it's, it's sprouted. Um, and I love it because I paint in one room, I collage in the other, and okay. uh, you can find my work everywhere. My, I, it's like my own museum slash gallery mm -hmm. slash studio. Mm -hmm. Right. Now that's pretty cool. Now, how does it uh, kind of how does that relate to also because you have a partner, you know, living with your partner and feeling like does he feel like you're taking over <laughs> the house? Oh, absolutely. Because of <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And I, honestly, I think the the secret to a successful marriage is you know selective <laughs> hearing and uh, uh, short term memory. You know, so <laughs> I think first of all, I think he likes my work, so okay. that helps. Uh, second of all, um, it comes with the territory. You know, it really yeah. comes with the territory and. If one day he showed up and everything was painted black, I don't think it would surprise me. <laughs> there you go. Now, Luis, do you have also have different studios along your through your art career? Uh, you have studios outside of your home, inside of your home. Um, what are the benefits that you think for you right now in this stage of where you are? Um, the benefits of having the studio where you are at uh, versus having it outside of, you know, let's say outside of your home. Honestly, in a place like New York where space is at a premium and uh, everything counts, uh, mm -hmm. I'm really happy with my studio now because I, I'm in a nice neighborhood where people are excited to kind of come visit. Um, mm -hmm. So we have that going for us. There's tons of cafes, tons of things to do. Um, but on the practical side, I get so much more done, right? So I literally can just um, mm -hmm. collage and Behind me, you can see I have my uh, collage wall. So, you know, this is, this is what I see right. when I wake up. And, and it really leaves an imprint on me, you know, because if uh -huh. it's the first thing you see, it, it gets in your psyche. And I'm like, yeah, let, let's do this. Um, so more than any other studio, I think this has been really special because I have the light that I want. Uh, and I can be the, the recluse that I want to be, not, not leave my house, just make art and, and, and use Instagram and Facebook to connect with people. You know? <laughs> right. And you have a beautiful view from your window, from your window, which you showed me a minute ago, which is really I do. Nice. Yeah. Let's see if I can. <laughs> yeah. Let's show us around. Oh, so we're that. on that the great. 38th floor today. Um, and then honestly, my, the thing that makes me the most happy is this, mm -hmm. my library. So there you go. I have a whole wall of books that um, keep me company and, you know, mm -hmm. share their wisdom with me. So, uh, That's right. yeah, super important. So what are some, what are some of the practices that, that you have or habits that you have that help you get creative when you are in your own space? Because sometimes this is very common, you know, talking to many artists and also I have uh, right next door is also um, a studio that I have at home too. And 
you know, in the home, you have distractions. It's so easy to turn in the TV or, you know, the phone rings or just grab something. And before you know it, you know, five hours just passed by and you didn't, a whole, you didn't do a whole lot. So what are some of the habits or practices that you have that helps you uh, kind of get creative and get to work in your studio that have helped you over the years? Because I think this will be helpful for some of our friends. The magic of an hour. So literally, you can do whatever. You can have the busiest day, but if you set an hour or 30 minutes, an hour is preferable. Just put it on your phone, timer, mm -hmm. go to the closet, go to the bathroom, and just work. You'd be surprised how much you can get accomplished. And that hour turns into two, turns into three, and it all adds up. You know, and I think that's really been key to my practice. Um, and, and I'm always amazed what can be done in a day uh, if you are just mindful of that one hour. Mm. So you really treated us, you know, it's a scheduled time, it's work time, and you have to honor that time that you set for yourself. Correct. And more than anything else, it's honor, right? I don't come with expectations of, oh, I'm going to finish uh, seven collages, or I'm going to finish this painting. No, I'm just going to show up and mm. honor that. And I think it goes up. It goes from there. Mm. Okay, great. And you also do quite a bit of traveling. You like to travel and you Absolutely. also have... A they also have a podcast, which in a minute I'll ask you to, you know, share, we can find it and so on. And how does also your traveling affects the way you work when you come back in your studio? Oh my God. So traveling is the best thing uh, for my art because like I said, I make collages and I'm a hoarder. So when I'm traveling, I collect <laughs> so many things that I couldn't find in, in the States or in, in my neighborhood mm -hmm. or in my city. Uh, even though I live in New York, I mean, you can't beat newspaper from Colombia or, you know, or, or right, a crumpled right. colored paper from Thailand. So to be yeah. able to incorporate all this and also pictures, I take tons of pictures to be able to incorporate mm -hmm. these things. Um, it really creates not only uh, a visual record of what I've been through, but mm -hmm. it opens some conversations. So that's really important to me. Mm, that's great. Now on a practical side, you know, when you have your studio at home, um, you know, how do you deal with, let's say a collector wants to come and see your work or for example, if you want to show, uh, you know, something to somebody, do you bring him to your space or do you meet him in a kind of a, in a third space? You know, how does that work for you? So this is getting really intimate. So listen up, um, because and, we and, and a little bit, that because I think a lot of our, all of our friends really could, could find great ideas from what you do, Luis. I think, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I hope so. I really hope so. So, I mean, <laughs> So we, we kind of splurge on a nice space, right? Um, so my, what I would do or what I do do is I meet at a cafe and we have a great conversation. I mean, you don't want to invite someone into your personal space if right. the, the connection isn't there or if just it's a weird vibe and you, you trust your gut, you know these things. Um, so after coffee, we talk about art and then if it's, an, if it's a go, then we come to the apartment and the apartment is set up. Like I said, my art is everywhere, like yeah. a showroom. So as soon as you come in, you see the work. Um, right. And, you know, we're, we're, people are a little, we're, we are a little superficial. So when I show them the view, right. when they see the work, they all of a sudden make the connection. Oh, you know, it, it, it's that valuable yeah. that it can get this view. Um, if right. that's true or not, I don't know. But mm -hmm. I think making it as much of a pleasant experience as you can mm -hmm. and a personal mm -hmm. experience is what makes those connections with people. Wonderful. And I think that is key because you see the work in a living, you know, in a living space where the collector ideally, you know, will buy a work of art and will put it in another living space, which will be their Absolutely. own or their office or some, or, you know, some place where they inhabit. So I think it, it totally makes perfect connection. And I think uh, you, you bring it right, at, right on point. Thank you, Luis. So, well, we're almost at time to, uh, to wrap it up for today. And uh, Luis, I want to ask you if you can tell us a little bit about your podcast, because you also have a podcast, uh, which I want to share with all our friends here at Breakfast with Sergio. They can follow you on it. Tell us uh, what is it about and where can we find it? Thanks. It's called, uh, what is it called? It's called Studio Confessions. And basically, <laughs> it's a little self-help. It's a little confessional. And it's really about dealing through the things we deal through as artists as people and uh it's it's just that it's very brief it's very to the point um and it's really exciting to be able to connect people on another with an, with people on another level um right. uh, and you can find it on spotify you can find it on anchor fm uh so listen awesome up. and where can we where can we find you on instagram instagram i'm at art engineer 
Super easy, super easy, my friends. Thank you so much, Luis. I appreciate you very much. Thank you so much for bringing us into your studio this, mer this morning. And my friends, if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. That will make us really, really happy as well. Don't forget to check out Luis' uh, podcast as well. Follow it. And uh, thank you, Luis, again. And we'll have to bring you one more time for the third visit. Thanks. That'd yeah, awesome. I'm going for three. Absolutely. <laughs> have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks, Luis. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.